The following is a production of the Dallas Genealogical Society. For more information, please visit our website at www.dallasgenealogy.org. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Everybody excited for football or genealogy today? Oh, dissension in the crowd. Okay. Well, thanks for thanks for coming out. Uh, my name is Todd D. Dickner. I'm president of the Dallas Genealogical Society. Uh, it's truly an honor, and uh, and I'm happy to see everybody. Uh, I apologize if I'm standing a little weird. Hopefully, I don't get too far away from the mic. We're laptop rich today, so got uh, two going. Okay, we've got a little bit of business up front. Um, like we do every month, we publish our. Uh, the, the minutes from the last meeting, they're on the table, uh, the welcome table outside, they're on the website. Any questions, comments, corrections? Reviews? Four star? <laughs> okay. All right, hearing none, we will consider the minutes approved. All right. And Travis, you want me to, 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 to go on to the next one and come back? Or are you ready to roll? I think he's ready to roll. <laughs> oh, actually, uh, I skipped a step. Uh, Gloria, our director of membership, confirmed that we have quorum this morning. So we will be able to conduct a, a few small pieces of business that we have. And with that, Travis, our treasurer extraordinaire, come on up, sir. Good morning. Good morning. The financial report for the Dallas Genealogical Society for the calendar month of September 2018 shows that the society had deposits that totaled $7,763, with payments that totaled $2,642 for a net increase in cash of $5,000. $121. The ending balances of cash and banks totaled $158,106. Any questions on the financial report? All right, hearing none, we will file those for a review. Okay, so one, one small piece of business we have this morning is our 2018-19 budget. This is a process that we go through every year, um, and it really just, op it, it just outlines uh, what we expect to take in for income and what we expect to spend uh, throughout the course of the year for running the society. So uh, I'll kind of walk through some highlights. I know it's kind of small. If you have a device, you can go to the, uh, to the website and follow along. Um, what we do is we look at what we've done in the past. You know, how, how have things gone over the last couple of years? Um, does that seem to, to fit into what we're gonna do this coming year? And if it does, great. If we need to make some adjustments, we'll make the adjustments. So, I'm gonna grab my cheat sheet. Uh, on the income side, uh, this is very similar to, to what it's looked like in the past. You know, some of the, Um, you know, some of the, the bigger ticket items, we've standardized a little bit on what we expect uh, in terms of income from our seminars, and that's what you see with these summer, spring, and fall updates. Uh, our membership is based on projections of what we expect in, in terms of members uh, joining and renewing this year. Um, there's some grants and, and gifts and contributions that we, we typically receive, and we're, we're very appreciative of those. Um, we've added them in here. Uh, as well as um, you know, a little bit of a uh, little bit of interest and some of the sales stuff that we do. I'll move on to expenses in a second. Um, any questions on the income? Okay. All right. I was just warming you up for the really complex one. Um, so again, same same philosophy of, of how we how we create this. Much of the 
the actual expense line items are the same. Um, we do have, uh, you can see our cost of goods. It matches what we, what we expect in terms of income. Um, we do have the, the cost of running uh, the various education elements that we have. Uh, and again, that's over the last couple of years, we've, we've really got, I think, pretty, pretty consistent results and we've, we've carried that through into what we expect to spend in this coming year. I'll make a few notes about some changes for those that uh, might be watching this a little bit more closely. Um, we are doing a little bit of um, updating of equipment this year. So one of the areas that, uh, that we've added for this year is to really update our, our video and audio equipment. And by update, I mean actually get some. So we, <laughs> if you look over here, Tony has been doing a, a fantastic job with his phone and the super cool recorder he has. But you know, it's time to, it's time to, to bring us forward there. So we're gonna look at that this year. Uh, as well as we added a little bit of, of money into the other under IT uh, to update our, our presentation laptop. The one that's updating behind the screen, which is why we're a little bit uh, discombobulated here. Um, so those are really the, the, the big changes. The one thing I will mention is that we're, we're on hiatus a little bit with our Pegasus publication, right? As, as we don't have a, a publisher or, or an editor, um, we are, uh, we took it out of the budget this year because we don't expect to, to deliver that. So that those are numbers that are actually taken out uh, for this year. We can always add that back in in, in future years if we, if we have interest and, and pick that back up. But those are the main changes from, uh, from really what we've seen over the last few years. Yes? Please tell me what a survey monkey is. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent question. So when we do surveys uh, for how was the seminar or if we're doing just a general membership survey, SurveyMonkey is the service uh, that, it actually is a really, a really cool service. You build the questions out and then you get a bunch of analytics and reports and so it's a software application. It's a, yeah, it's a it's a web service Thank for you. surveys. Yep. <laughs> not a monkey. Well, the monkey's not going door to door. No, no. But it would be amusing. Um, okay. Any other questions? Good question. Todd, I'm just curious about uh, our expenses are proposed to exceed our income. Why is that? It's an excellent question. Um, so when I was talking about the uh, other here, we bumped up other to include a laptop um, the, to replace the one that we have. So there's discussion that, that um, you know, if during the course of the year we do that, we will, uh, th there wasn't necessarily a, a bump in income. It would likely come out of, uh, just pull it out of savings. So we'll, that's a great question. Somebody else asked about that um, and what we, what Kathleen, this number here, our expenses, uh, is a little bit higher than what we project for income. So in this particular case, rather than um, increase these, when we do a, a capital expense like that, we typically will we'll pull it out of savings. Um, so we'll look at that. That's, that's, a, that's a great question on you know, keeping these numbers aligned. And if we do that, we'll, um, we'll either, we'll make, it, we'll make the numbers work. But, does that make sense? Do you buy that, Kathleen? You're my... <laughs> well, I, I think normally you would uh, want to have all of your expenses uh, accounted for in your income. And you would either set an income goal uh, that's realistic, uh, or you would decrease some of your expenses. So that's just a conservative way to do budget, I think, it's, generally speaking. But we don't have a capital budget. This is an expense budget. So if we were going to have a capital budget, Okay, it's just an operating budget. If you were going to have a capital budget, then you wouldn't put your capital expenses inside of your operating budget, and by taking them out of there, you could be able to balance your income and expense. So I just throw that out. It yeah. is, from a management a money perspective, that's more what I'm familiar with. Gotcha. Um, we, and, and we can certainly, the, the, the other thing I would mention about a budget like this is that um, you know, this is, this is what we sort of think the year is going to look like in terms of income and expenses. As it goes on, uh, from time to time, we do need to make adjustments, um, and we bring that back to this meeting to talk about, uh, uh, you know, changes that we want to make, either increase or decrease things. So we'll add that to, uh, to talk about, to, to sort of correct that, and maybe consider the, the capital piece. This, yeah. Uh, I, I heard here that we're going to buy some digitizing Mm -hmm. Is that 
that's that's definitely on the on the agenda. Yeah. It's not in this budget. We will. Th that will be one of the items that we we vote on in the next month or two, um, and we would pull that from savings. Other questions? All right. Well, this is this is where we we need to, to transact a little bit of business um, with the the budget presented as is. Um, if there's no other questions, I would like to, uh, this came out of our board meeting, so we'll go into a vote to approve the 2018-19 budget, move it from propo proposed to actual. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And we will take the action to, uh, to look at this part as well, to get that in uh, alignment. Thank you. And thank you again. Um, so we, we over the last uh, um, couple of months, we've been talking about the North Texas Giving Day event, uh, which has been great over the last few years. We had a, a, a particular project in mind, digitizing our newsletters uh, from 1976 to 2015. And I believe it was about 3,500 pages of, of digitization uh, that's going to take place. And in order to, uh, we, we use UNT to do that. They do a great job. They'll get it posted on their portal. Um, and we focused our 2018 campaign on raising money for that, uh, as well as the Rescuing Texas uh, History Grant of $1,000. So between those two, we will have enough to, uh, to digitize our newsletters, which is fantastic. And if this is approximate, um, there's always a little bit of there's potential to actually get a little bit more, uh, depending on what uh, North Texas uh, Giving Day does. They do some incentives and things, but uh, we'll, we'll get a final number in a, in a check, um, and anything that goes over the amount it's gonna take to digitize, uh, we donate back to the Kathy Nelson Cartman Portal to History. So thank you for all that helped spread the message, and thank you for, for the folks that, uh, that donated. That's exciting, yeah. Okay, just, uh, just a, a quick note, um, you know, I was having a conversation this morning about a society like this and, and all of the things that happen. Um, Y'all are the power for the organization, right? This is how the, the engine works, is volunteers helping with all facets of what we do in the, uh, in the society. Um, and we do have a few, a few areas where uh, we're looking for additional help. Hospitality, um, we, uh, we're kind of rotating that around a little bit. If you're interested in this and, and want to and wanna help do that on a consistent basis, love to talk to you. Uh, our newsletter, uh, over the last couple of months, um, Tony has done a fantastic job of sort of picking up the, the newsletter responsibilities. Um, I, I dare say he's not going to do that forever. So if there's somebody that wants to, uh, to step in and start learning that process, uh, please talk to one of us. You know, we have the, the, the uh, the really cool uh, badges you can track one of us down, um, and uh, the uh, the board member bullet is really about thinking about the future. You know, we've we've got some folks that have been on the board for a while. We're starting to to kind of think about succession planning, and if you're interested in the the business side of the society, uh, I'd love to talk to you. We'd love to talk to you about opportunities that are coming up in ways that you can engage at that level. Uh, so think, I, I would just ask that you think about how you can, how you, some skills and talents you might have that can contribute to uh, this society and, and keeping us moving in the right direction. Okay, so um, we have on the 19th, you know what is, Patty, do you want to talk about this? Or do you want me to just, yeah, okay, all right. I was putting her on the spot there. Um, you know, I, I, we, we talked about this last time. Um, I do want to, um, to just highlight a couple things. This is a really, a really cool event that uh, Genealogy Network of Texas uh, has been doing this kind of a, a virtual day-long event, and the Dallas Public Library is participating this year. We're, part, we're partnering with them to, to help put this on. So you're going to have an opportunity to see some live talks, uh, watch some sessions that are being broadcast from other locations. Um, have a chance to spend some time up on the eighth floor. It's going to be a really fun event. It's on Friday the 19th of October. 
Um, there's a bunch of stuff to do, and there's, a, there's some ways you can help as well. If you want to uh, sort of help with any of the, uh, the logistics of getting it set up, uh, as well as maybe man a, a table to talk about uh, you know, genealogical help, helping folks get started or, or answer questions. So if you go to the website, as usual, there's a, a Get Involved section, and you can choose the option to sign up for uh, whatever you want to volunteer for. Uh, it's all appreciated, and we definitely need it. So think about that. Pop out there and, uh, and, uh, and plug your name in. And Tosh, that starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. It goes to 8.30 in the evening. Got it. All day event. All day event. 10.30 to 8 in the evening. Along with the, the one pager that talks about this, mm -hmm. there was a second page that was briefly available upstairs which said which things had classes from 8.30 on. And those, we need to get some more upstairs so the people that don't know much about it will know what they want to come for. So who's going to spend eight hours? Not many people, but you might know. It is also available on the website if you go to Yeah, but GTL. you have to know to go to the website. <laughs> we need people that are not members of DGS to come to some of those things. So are these library flyers? Is that what? Hmm? Were these from the? It's a second, I'm sorry. Were these from the library? Sorry. Yeah, up at the volunteer desk of the library, when people come in to do research, let them get one of those free, besides the one that talks about the event, mm -hmm. the one that's got the schedule if you want a specific activity. <coughs> Great. Thank you. Good feedback. All right. I'd like to bring up Jim Thornhill. He's our vice president. We'll talk about uh, seminars. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is still morning. Yes, yeah, still morning. We just had, let's make figure out this technology. We just had our fall seminar last week. It went over really well. I think everybody had a lot of fun. 100% of the people that have completed the survey so far. <laughs> <laughs> the survey monkey so far have said that they would attend another seminar, which to me I think is a really good indication of that people liked it and would like to come back. The, some of the quotes we received were the tremendous lectures. I came not knowing anything and left feeling like I can do it. And then there was almost too much info, but the info we got was very helpful for me, and I'm looking forward to using it to knock down some Irish walls. So nice. I think it was a successful seminar. One thing I wanted to, to tell everybody um, while I was looking at some of the results from the survey, when you, when you either tell us at a meeting, make some suggestions for, a sit for the seminars or do some results on the survey, keep in mind that we book these surveys like 18 months in advance. So if you give us a suggestion on this survey or at this meeting, it probably won't get implemented until at least a year from now. So don't think that we don't hear what you're suggesting we do, and I, I read these things very carefully to take to heart what people are asking for, but just because of the fact that these are national speakers and they have to be booked a long time in advance and there's a lot of preparation, that we can't just implement things right away. So but the, be assured we are listening and we, we are trying to give you what you want to hear. So I just wanted to throw that in there. In 2019, our first seminar Maybe. There we go. In April, April 13th, it's going to be Michael Lacopo coming back to join us after being here in 2015. Uh, method to our madness. He's going to go talk about successful methodology and how to, to um, use methodology in our research. And I think that's something we all need to hear from time to time. Then Jenny Russell, the legal genealogist, is going to be with us August 3rd. And then Jen Baldwin from Ancestral Journeys will be with us October 12th. So we got a good lineup coming up for next year. And that's all I have. All right. Thank you. All right. I'd like to bring up Tony Hansen to talk about the North Texas so so Society Summit. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, one of the things that uh, we as a an organization and we as a board of directors decided to do about three years ago was to try to step up and take more of a leadership role in the North Texas region in terms of trying to help some of our brother and sister societies. And so we had this idea of having a, a summit for societies 
to talk about their issues and try to learn from each other and to share ideas and to try to improve the way that our organizations are run. And so this year, just uh, just the day before the summit, we uh, had our third event, co-chaired with Kathleen Mur Kath yeah, right. I got <laughs> Kathleen Murray, and I were the co-chairs for it. And um, by all indications, from everything we can see, it was a hugely successful event. We had 40 people representing 16 different societies uh, who spent a pretty long, intense day together talking about common interests or common issues, common problems, and sharing some ideas for some solutions for them. And then we capped off the end of the day with David Rencher, uh, who had been sitting throughout the day kind of listening to the conversations and then shared some of his thoughts about society leadership. And um, feedback has just been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, we're still, our survey monkeys are running around getting the information too, but a preliminary look at the stuff uh, is showing that the, um, the, the comments and the, the feedback is just really very positive and very grateful. We recorded the whole event, so we had several panel discussions, we had a panel discussion, we had lots of tabletop discussions. One of the feedback we've been getting through the years is that society members love to talk to each other about their societies and their issues and their problems, and we gave lots of opportunity for that, and then turned that back around and said, okay, at the end of the discussion, tell us what you learned, what do you think, what's new, what, what other people need to know about what you talked about, and had that interspace throughout the day. And so all of those feedback sessions had been uh, recorded. We've got real good video of that too. So we'll be able to, for anybody who wants to go back and, and sign our website now, to kind of learn from the other societies, um, it, it's a very valuable resource. So it's just you know, one of the things that uh, you know, we as a very successful and fairly large society in the region have been able to do with your support. You're being here, your financial contributions, you're supporting the board that the way that you do has allowed us to step up to this. And, so what we think is a pretty significant um, you know, niche and um, an important area for being a leader amongst societies. So great event, great support from, uh, from the society for allowing us to do it, and I just think a, a great example of what we as a society and a group of people can do. So well done us. It was a really good event. Any questions or comments about that? Thank you. Well, thank you, Tony and Kathleen, for putting that together. Um, it, it, it was really fantastic. Um, the, only, the other thing that was interesting is the, uh, the experience level of some of the folks uh, was pretty varied, right? You had some people that have been doing this for a long time in terms of societies, and some people that are just getting started, and this was kind of their first foray into it. So uh, really, really love the passion and, uh, and focus that the Dallas Genealogical Society brings to you know, the, the broader community. Okay, do we have any guests today? I don't know if anybody snuck in that I didn't see. Okay, we have one, all right. Thank you for being here. Um, we, uh, one of the things that, that the society does in addition to the seminars that Jim talked about um, and the, the meetings that we have uh, throughout the year uh, with, with various speakers, we have special interest groups. And you can see the, uh, the, the list that we have up here. These meet, uh, normally they're monthly meetings, um, and they cover a variety of topics and specialties in genealogy. So um, this is just the schedule. I'd encourage you to check out the website. It has the dates and some specifics uh, about topics they might be talking about and where, the, where they'll be, et cetera. So um, encourage you to, to plug into the, the special interest groups and, uh, and keep going with your genealogical research. Okay, I do want to mention- You got it. Yes, sir. Just real quick, if you yep. go back to the schedule. Yep. Uh, the Jewish meeting October 17th has been canceled. It's not going to be held this month. Oh, yes. Thank you. And, uh, November 1 technology. We're going to be at PSGS conference. So the November 1 technology is canceled. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Interactive. <laughs> okay. So when you, uh, you know, these, I, I believe they're actually reflected on the website. I think I just, I just uh, didn't have these uh, updated. Um, but yeah, definitely get out there. Uh, it, it is a great chance to, to talk to different folks uh, and get into some, uh, some really interesting conversations. Okay, in, in December, we don't have a, a meeting like this. We, uh, we take a little bit of time off um, and we have a, a, uh, an awards luncheon. This is a chance for us to, to get together, uh, you know, have some, uh, some, some fun, some good conversations with the society as a whole. Um, and we, we announced some awards. We want to recognize really great work that's happened uh, in, the genealogy, uh, in the genealogy community as well as work that's happening here uh, in the society. So this is where I need some input from, from you folks. We have 
um, a series of awards that are given out, um, Award of Merit, Heritage Preservation, etc. And we want to hear from you guys. What, who do you think has done a really fantastic job that, that we as a society should recognize? Um, if you go to the, you know, the, the URL is kind of long there, but if you uh, uh, go to our events menu, you'll see the awards uh, link. But you have a, a little form you fill out, say who you uh, think should be recognized, and a little bit about what they did and, and why you think that. Um, and we'll, uh, there's a committee that gets together and looks at all the, the input and selects the, the folks that we want to recognize this year. So, so think about that, um, and then pop out to the website and let us know who, you're, uh, who you think we should recognize. And of course, there'll be information as we get a little closer to the, to the date to sign up if, if you want to attend. I hope to see as many folks as can make it. Okay. Um, so, oh, <laughs> you know, the one thing that's constant is change, right? Um, so Kroger has sort of revamped their community rewards program, um, did some back-end things, and, and one of the results of that is they really changed their, their, uh, uh, their designation system and their numbers, all the stuff that's in the background. So we're flashing this up here as, as for two reasons. One, um, as a reminder that if you shop at Kroger, we get 1% uh, back. Uh, matched from Kroger. Just, it doesn't cost you anything. It's just purely money that comes to us. Um, and if you were already doing that, thank you. If you haven't done it um, or you were doing it, you have to redesignate Dallas Genealogical Society uh, because they did make this change. It's pretty straightforward. You can click on this link. Um, it was in the last newsletter. You just go out there. I did it. It, it, was, it was fast. It was easy. You just search for Dallas Genealogy and, and it pops it right up. You click it. Um, and then every time you spend money there, it sends a little bit of money our way, so we would appreciate it if you shop at Kroger to uh, to sign up. The other thing I will say, people yeah. that shop at Kroger may not even know. If you buy a Kroger's brand, you get a percentage off your thing, whether you have anything to do with BGS or not, on your on your sales ticket. So you know why not? Two for one, right? Yeah. Yep. And uh, Gloria reminded me that we have a, a similar. Uh, Tom Thumb has a similar program. Their numbers haven't changed, that's on the website. So um, if you shop back and forth, if you shop at one or the other, think about us and, and go uh, designate us as your, as your community uh, donor. Okay, so one cool thing that's, that's happening, you may have noticed the parking, uh, Wood Street is, has changed a little bit. Um, it's gonna go, I don't think it's the full way, but a big chunk of that is gonna be uh, two-way now. They're switching it from one-way to two-way. Um, it starts tomorrow, so today was your last chance to use it the old-fashioned way, uh, and tomorrow you'll be able to, to make that left turn onto wood uh, to get to the parking deck. Yeah, that's, that's worth it. <laughs> Round of applause. It's uh, changing from all the way east to two-way. I'm not sure how far it goes. It seems like um, it seems like when you come off Griffith or whatever that street is down there, it doesn't go all the way, uh, so I'm not I'm not totally sure how far it goes. I do know at least uh, that section by the library and that next street up will be uh, two lanes. You can see you, if you look at it, you can see the lines are painted. They're putting the signs up. They were putting them up when I got in this morning, so they will unveil this tomorrow. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, first day. Okay, I, I did want to just, just mention we, we had a, uh, uh, a note from our friends at uh, the Angelina County Genealogical Society that they're, they've got a few events coming up. And I uh, just wanted to highlight our very own Patty Smith is going to be doing a talk on August, or excuse me, October 15th. So if you're out Lufkin way, uh, stop in and, and watch Patty. I don't know, where's Lufkin? I'm, I'm not a native. Southeast. Um, southeast, okay. Far? Close? <laughs> okay. If you're in the neighborhood, uh, <laughs> support Patty. Um, but uh, but that, that is going on, and there's another talk that same day a little bit later in the day to maybe warrant a three-hour drive down there. Okay. Lisa, our Director of Education, come up and intro us.
next month, <laughs> you can uh, join us here for our general meeting. Stephanie Bennett from uh, the eighth floor is going to come down and talk to us about all the genealogical resources that are available here to you in the Dallas Public Library. This has been a presentation of the Dallas Genealogical Society. If you're already a member, thank you. Your membership dues are supporting this and other society activities. If you're not yet a member, I hope you consider joining. You can become a member for as little as $35 a year, and you can join by going to our website, dallasgenealogy.org, and clicking on the Membership tab.